the most delightfully fascinating character in the realms of mystery, Charlie Chan. Charlie Chan describes the killing of Ellen Landini and Dr. Swan at Pine View as the most baffling mystery of his long career. Hoping to get some information from Miss Meacher, Landini's secretary, the Honolulu detective has journeyed to Reno, and there he learns that Romano is still heir to Landini's fortune. He also learns that the gun used to kill Landini was the gun used to kill Swan, but that it was not Landini's own gun, as they had formerly supposed. Back at Pine View, John Ryder, also an ex-husband of Landini, walks into the living room where Leslie Beaton, Sheriff Holt, and Romano are discussing the case. Sheriff, it doesn't seem to have struck either Chan or you that some outsider may have come in and killed Landini. You mean a passing tramp, a burglar, someone like that, Mr. Ryder? Yes, it's happened before, you know. Suppose for a minute that happened, Mr. Ryder. How did the murderer get away? What do you mean, get away? He could get away as easily as he got in. Everybody was watching for the landing of the plane. Hardly, Mr. Ryder. You yourself admitted seeing Swan and Romano leave the study. Cecile was on the back stairs, so the murderer couldn't have left that way without being seen. But the sheriff, not one single person was near the front door. The murderer could have come in and left by that door. But to do that, Mr. Romano... The murderer would have to pass the room I was in. And I saw all the others. I would have seen the murderer, too. But it is possible, nevertheless, that your attention might have been directed elsewhere at that moment, Miss Beaton. Ah, yes, that is true, Mr. Ryder. But still, to reach the front door, the murderer would have to pass Mr. Ward, Mr. Ireland, Mr. Beaton, as they came up the main stairs. No, very much afraid that my own suggestion is not, uh, what you say in America, such a hot one. Well, we don't seem to be of much assistance to the local gendarmes in this case. Uh, let's take a walk down to the lakefront, Romano. Walk? Can Signor Ryder be serious? Walk on such a ground as these? Wet, cold? Is it to catch the cold that you would deliberately go out? Oh, all right. Let's go to the billiard room. I'll give you 25 and bet you a dollar I'll run up to 100 before you. Ah, that is different. The game, the chance, the gamble. I will, uh, what you call, chalk the cue with you. But walk in this weather? No, no, senor. It is unthinkable. <laughs> <laughs> this is your first real stay in the country, isn't it, Miss Leeton? Yes, it is, Sheriff. Longer than I expected to. Yes, you find it kind of slow here, don't you? Well, not exactly. I'm not accustomed to being involved in murder mysteries. Oh, but I mean the quiet of the country itself. No shows, no excitement. Pretty dead after city life. Mm, But the beauty of the scenery more than makes up for the lack of shows and whatever other disadvantages you might think of. Yes, it is pretty. I don't think I could live in the city. I imagine anybody from the city would find it pretty difficult to, well, get used to it. A lot of people I know would gladly give up the city for the country if they could make a living. I have to go back to the city and you've no idea how I dread it. But but you don't have to, you know. I have my living to make. But, but, um, but your brother... (laughs) Huey will have to make a whole lot more in the future than he has in the past before I can rely on him. But... He's heir to Landini's estate. You forget that. I don't forget it. And I wouldn't touch a penny of her money. And I don't think Huey will either. 
Doggone it, I'm glad to hear you say that. There's no real reason why you shouldn't, of course, but I'm glad just the same, Leslie. Uh, you don't care if I called you Leslie? Certainly not. I... I rather like it. And you don't have to call me Sheriff. Very well. John. No, that's better. <laughs> Feels more friendly, like. Mm -hmm. Folks in the country mostly call one another by their first name. Is that the only reason you want to call me Leslie? No, of course not. I... Well, I... I like you. And I have liked you from the very first moment I saw you sitting there in that living room, scared to death. And you were so kind. It... It helped a lot, Sheriff. Down. That first night. Sheriff! Mr. Holt! Yes, what is it? A telephone. Someone wants to talk to you. I'll be right there. Come on, Leslie. We'll see who it is and what he wants. Meanwhile, over in Reno, at Miss Meacher's hotel room, Charlie Chan, Ward, Sam Holt, and Miss Meacher look at one another amazed as Sam Holt repeats the information he has received. There can't be no mistake about it. The deputy at San Francisco said the bullet removed from Landini's body was fired by the same gun as was used to kill Swan, but that neither one bullet nor t'other came from Landini's gun. But that's nonsensical. Impossible. Well, as I told Mr. Chan before, I ain't got much use for science, but somehow that kind of fits in with what I expected. Quite so, Mr. Holt. Now that first shock of imparted information is past, Facts take on more reasonable placement in scheme of things. But the idea is fantastic. Why, we, all of us, yourself included, Mr. Cham, thought that Vandini had been killed by her own gun. Quite so, Mr. Ward. Which only goes to prove that detectives should be most careful about jumping to conclusions, no matter how reasonable said conclusions appear to be. But more of this later. At present, we confine attentions to Miss Meacher whom we are depriving of most valuable time. Well, I'm glad to be of assistance, Mr. Chan. Passing from Mr. Romano, who you feel assured knew that he was still heir to Landini Estates, we come to Mr. Ireland. I'm afraid I cannot tell you much about Mr. Ireland. But you have seen him? Yes, I've met him several times. You knew, of course, that he was Swan's chauffeur when he was, that is, when Swan was married to Landini, and that Swan accused him of making love to his wife behind his back? It ain't very often that they make love to a fellow's wife before his eyes, Mr. Chan. Last no, Mr. Holt. Plum blossom which, because it is raised behind high wall, always seems more beautiful, is stolen when master is absent in marts of trade. This island, Miss Meacher, he was in love with Landini? No, I believe there was some sort of love affair between them. It was before my time. Since she came here, she's enjoyed riding about in the plane. But it was all over, at least on her side. I'm sure of that. Ah, yes. Like a turbulent stream, unhampered and untamed, she swept on to new pastures. But, Miss Meacher, was it all over on his, Mr. Island's side? Well, I... I... I suppose I must tell everything. I did overhear him making love to her one evening... But she only laughed at him. So, she laughed at him? Yes. Told him to stick to his wife, Cecile. She reminded him that when first she saw him, he had just returned from the war and was in uniform. It was the uniform, Michael, I heard her say. I fell in love with every man who wore one. He was flyer? I do not think so. No, I, I believe he was in an infantry regiment. So, war service, a steady hand, a clear eye, a good shot. Ah, but we will consider that phase later. Now to proceed to our next gentleman, Dr. Swan. Contemptible. So I've gathered. Madam had no dealings with him since the divorce? Oh, but she has. Since you have come to Reno, he has visited Madam? Most certainly. Ah, he lied to us about that. But then that is not surprising. One cannot disregard the dragon's fiery breath, even though he speaks honeyed words. His visits, of course, Miss Meacher, were uh, necessary if he were to follow his trade. You mean his profession as a doctor? Alas, no. I mean his nefarious trade as a blackmailer. Who, who told you that? No matter. We know it. 
Do we not, Mr. Holt? Aye, Miss Meacher. We know about Dr. Swan. He'll not worry any more. Well, we might as well tell her, Mr. Chan. Yes, Mr. Holt, it would be only fair. Miss Meacher doubtless has wondered whether or not Swan would turn his attentions to her now that Landini is beyond his avaricious advances. Uh, you see, Miss Meacher, Swan was murdered. Dr. Swan? Dead? Yes. Well, I'll be forgiven, I hope. But I'm not sorry. Now, we know that Madam paid Swan $250 a month as the price of his silence. For what, Miss Meacher? Well, I, I really don't know. I... <sighs> so sorry to be placed in an embarrassing position of contradicting a lady, but you do know. Oh, really, Mr. Chan, if I knew... Miss Meacher... You know that Madame Landini paid Swan that money because, somehow, Swan had become aware of the birth of her child. She paid it because Swan threatened that if she did not, he would impart the information to Mr. Dudley Ward, the child's father. Come, my dear Miss Meacher. This is not the time for double dealing. I want the truth. And, and I want it too. I must know. Can't you see? I'm sorry. When you first came in, I wasn't sure. I wanted time to think. I, I have thought. It, it really doesn't matter now, I suppose. You may as well know. Yes, Madam had a son. A lovely boy. Dudley, she called him. He would have been 18 next January if... If, uh, if... if what, Miss Meacher? If he had lived. He was killed in an automobile accident three years ago. Oh, I... I'm so sorry, Mr. Ward. And... And I... I never saw him. I never... saw him. So... From this unexpected source comes the answer to the problem Charlie Chan had originally come to Pine View to solve. There still remains, however, the question of who killed Landini and Dr. Swan. And just how much this latest discovery will advance the solution of that mystery remains to be seen. When you have heard your sponsor's message, Inspector Chan will be with us again. Inspector Chan, you have something for us this evening? Indeed, yes, Mr. Wilson. I am thinking of people who have irresistible desire for things not owned by them. Yes, Mr. Chan? Honorable Mandarin once said, if you would try man's honesty, send him first to buy vegetables in marketplace. For he who takes that which is valueless cannot be trusted with key to treasure vault. But he who is honest in little things will prove a good guardian of his master's honor. Thank you, Mr. Chan, and good night. <laughs>